This is breaking news. A spate of smoke and wildfire uh, particulate matter coming into the state. Uh, all of New York State, with the exception of the Adirondacks right now, is under a air quality health advisory issued by DEC and DOA to the direction of the governor. Um, yesterday, I think everyone saw the impacts of that, the simply Dickensian skies that led into the night last night um, with extraordinary le levels of particulate matter statewide. Uh, New York City experienced some of the worst air quality in the world last night. Um, conditions seem to have worsened today. Uh, we have thick levels of smoke that traveled uh, from the northern directions through Watertown, where we experienced hazardous air pollution levels. Syracuse, uh, where we now have hazardous pollution levels at uh, 438 on the AQI scale, and of course, heading down into New York City. Uh, we understand that LaGuardia is on a ground stop right now due to visibility down the city. Uh, what do the levels mean? We talked about that yesterday. We can get into that again today. Certainly, we're talking about hazardous. That's on the, on the AQI scale, over 300. Uh, uh, very unhealthy between uh, 200 and 300, uh, and unhealthy 150 to 200. Um, what are we doing about it? Uh, the governor, as I mentioned a moment ago, the governor, DC and DOH issued an air quality health advisory. We have done so now for the past five days. We are uh, doing it also for tomorrow. Again, that's going to be statewide tomorrow. Again, with the exception of the Adirondacks, we don't expect any relief insight uh, from the fires that are burning across the uh, across the provinces. Uh, so number two, earlier today, the governor released a statement urging all schools to limit outdoor activity, uh, many of uh, which have done so already, including New York City. Um, number three, we are doing what we can to fight fires, of course, as we always do. Our forest rangers, uh, several are deployed now to uh, to uh, help fight. Uh, we have a crew boss who's now currently on the ground in one of the provinces doing some important work. Uh, again, the forecast for tomorrow uh, is another day uh, like today um, and likely into Friday itself. We are monitoring the source of, uh, the, of the problem as well up in Canada. Uh, rain is forecast, unfortunately not until next week. When that rain arrives in Canada, that will help to diminish the, the presence of smoke um, off of the fires, uh, we will be watching, of course, the, pre the prevailing winds. It's not just the smoke, it's where the, where the smoke is blowing. And of course, it's been blowing from the north over the last few days, as everyone has seen. Um, again, we urge it, all New Yorkers to limit outdoor activity. Uh, it's unhealthy uh, for all New Yorkers. There's some groups, of course, that Dr. Uh, McDonald will talk about that, that experience greater conditions, uh, greater uh, health conditions as a result of the smoke. Uh, we also urge New Yorkers to limit any kind of campfires or burning. Uh, not only are you potentially exacerbating local air quality issues, uh, but this is a very dry state. We've been tracking a very dry state now for many weeks, and we're looking at a prolonged period of dryness, which of course gives rise to fire conditions here in New York. And we don't need our first responders uh, running around putting out fires in New York while we're now dealing with the smoke that's blowing in from Canada. Um, so I'll turn that over to Commissioner McDonald to give a briefing and then we'll take questions. Yeah, thank you, Commissioner Segos. And I am Dr. Jim McDonald, the Acting Commissioner of the New York State Department of Health. You know, if you've been looking out the window the last couple of days, you can see the effects of the Canadian wildfires. And, you know, I think it's important to have that as context. We can see, you know, what's going on around us here. And, and one of the things I think it's important to kind of frame up is, you know, as a state, we're all going through this exposure at the same time, you know, and there's different levels of exposure of these pollutants in different parts of the state. You know, central New York right now is getting hit much harder, uh, but really the entire state um, is noticing the impact of this. I just want to touch a little bit on what I would call vulnerable populations. In other words, individuals who, when they go outside, are at higher risk or having respiratory problems more so than other individuals. So, you know, people who have existing lung disease, maybe someone with asthma, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, or other people who have heart disease, someone who had maybe congestive heart failure, or maybe you've had a prior heart attack. These are some individuals that are, that, you know, that we would expect we at higher risk to have a harder time uh, with the air conditions out there right now. There's other individuals too that are gonna be a little bit more vulnerable. You know, anyone who's moved far along in their pregnancy would notice this. 
you know, we have to think about some other individuals as well, maybe the very young and the very old as well. So we want to be thoughtful about those individuals in particular, that they really do try to stay inside with their windows closed. I know not everybody has air conditioning, uh, but right now, at least right now throughout the state, the temperatures are reasonable. Uh, so hopefully, you know, that'll be something where people can be comfortable with that in mind here. You know, if you do have to go outdoors, and I, I think this is one of those things where in certain parts of the state, if you have to go outdoors, like in central New York right now, I probably would really think very thoughtfully about that because in central New York in particular, really seeing very high um, air quality index numbers. But if you have to go outdoors, you know, wearing a mask, this happens to be an N95 mask. But if you wear a mask when you're outdoors, these masks do remove particles that and they do remove air pollution. Like some of you might remember before the before the pandemic, you know, N95 masks were sold at, you know, these major big box hardware stores for a reason. Some people in the construction industry use masks like this, but they are very effective at removing particles. And keep in mind, the air pollutant particles we're talking about are much larger than viral particles. So these would be something people use if they walk outside. Having said that, you know, if you don't need to go outside, particularly in central New York, would advise you not to do that. I'm going to stop right there and I want to leave time for people to ask questions. I see there's quite a few folks on and I think answering questions might be the best use of our time. You know, one of the questions I just saw in the chat really quick was, is it beneficial to turn on your home air conditioner to filter the air? Yeah, I think it's always a good idea to have your air conditioning running to keep your temperature cool. I wouldn't make it so cool that it's uncomfortable. Uh, so, but I think it's a, it's a fair thing to do, a good thing to do. All right, if other people have questions, you can raise your hand and I will unmute you that way. All right, I'm going to start here. We have Andrew or uh, Dave McKinley. Me? Dave, go ahead. Oh, yes, Dan, thank you very much. Uh, Two partner for you. The one is uh, how do you measure the, I mean, how many measuring stations do you have around Basil to, to get the, um, you know, the, the most up to date information to people, if, if indeed that's what you do. And the other part, I'm just curious, do you, you mentioned people with the health director. Um, if you have problems, if you have conditions, most don't. So for a healthy person, a normal average healthy person, they're not going to keel over uh, if they go outdoors. Or yeah, so maybe I could start with that question. Yeah, for if an otherwise healthy person, you know, it depends on the air quality index. And, you know, one website that I find helpful, it's easy to remember, is airnow.gov. If you go to airnow.gov, it does give you the air quality index for your locality. So you just put in your zip code, name your town, you'll find out. But for the average person who's otherwise healthy, when you walk outside, you may not notice a difference right away. You probably won't notice a difference right away. You'll walk out and it, it you know, might feel a little bit thick after you've been out there a little bit. You know, one of the things to keep in the back of your mind, if you're out walking and all of a sudden you're coughing or you're feeling short of breath, that's a signal. When your body speaks to you, you want to listen to your body. If you're coughing and short of breath, you want to move indoors, preferably to an air conditioned space. And then I, I didn't really hear the first part of your question. Your audio kind of cut out and I want to be helpful there. What was that please again? Yeah, I think it, I think it was about the stations that we have around the state. Um, I can speak to that. We have uh, several stations around the state, almost a dozen, uh, where we're taking current monitoring. Uh, we also work with partners at SUNY Albany, uh, the MISONET program, um, and we're drawing some federal data, uh, National Weather Service data as needed. Uh, I will also say that the default weather app on uh, my iPhone goes right to an air quality map that's really handy for wherever you are. You can tap on that, see the, see the actual numbers. And it says that right now uh, the air in Albany is at 190. So uh, again, very handy tools that people can use to uh, to move to understand what's going on when they're on the move. All right, we'll go to the next raised hand, which is Eduardo Cuevas. Eduardo, go ahead. Eduardo, you're unmuted, but we don't hear you. I'll just take a question from Michael Keller that that popped up in the in the uh, in the chat. Um, we are looking at the weather patterns. Um, unfortunately, the wind doesn't appear to be shifting uh, in a favorable direction over the next day or two. 
Uh, it looks to again come from the north, which is exactly where the fires are, and will continue to bring uh, that smoke right off the fires uh, directly south into New York. And if Eduardo's out there, we're going to try Andrew Donovan. Andrew, you can go ahead. And if people's mics aren't working, then use the chat and we'll go from there. He said use the chat if your mic's not working. Okay. Andrew, if you're talking, we can hear you now. I just heard you. Andrew. Okay, great. Sorry about that. Um, so my questions um, for Commissioner Sagos. One, um, we were over at the air monitoring station in East Syracuse just to see what it looks like. Um, and you actually had someone working there. So I'm wondering if, if there's active um, upgrades or maintenance or double testing happening at these locations. It's amazing that we have one only feet from our station in, in, in East Syracuse. And the other is yesterday your, your uh, teams had said that this was the worst air quality perhaps since 2002, also to, to also blamed by uh, wildfires in Canada. Now that that we're at this uh, this uh, even worsen stage, is this the worst ever? Listen, good question. It's certainly the the worst in memory um, by far. I think even just visually seeing the skyline again, this discant discant this Dickensian skyline across New York City and many of the other uh, upstate cities, um, it certainly is unprecedented. At least since two thousand two, it's the worst air we've seen. Um, as to the monitoring stations and the maintenance we do, yes, we're constantly doing upgrades to our system. Uh, we also lost, last year, the governor launched a statewide mobile monitoring program. Uh, we have cars in, in 12 communities around the state that are taking real time monitoring uh, right now. Again, designed for a different purpose, designed to address localized pollution sources, but those are also uh, taking readings of, uh, of a particulate matter. So we expect to be able to fold in a much greater uh, degree of, of, of science into our analysis of, of current threats to, uh, to both uh, human health and the environment. We have a question on the chat. What are some of the long-term health issues that can arise from exposure to poor air quality? Yeah, so really it does talk about your lungs in particular, right? So when you're exposed to, you know, to the pollution for a long term, it can make you more likely to have a lung infection, either pneumonia or bronchitis. And, and this is part of what we're trying to really get people to think about in particular. Like, and, and, and I want to make sure I, I'm really clear about if you have to go outside, like if you're in central New York right now, where the air quality is really, you know, just in a very hazardous state right now, that's where you would wear a mask in particular. Because if, if you're in central New York and you have to go outside, when you're seeing the AQI number over 300, I would definitely wear a mask if I was going outside right now. The same time I have here in my hand here, 995 in particular is good. You know, but long-term exposure, you know, is what we're concerned about. Makes you more likely for pulmonary infections. Can make you more likely to have an exacerbation of your asthma too. So part of the reason we want people with asthma not to go outside is, you know, keep in mind asthma, once you're inflamed in your lungs, it can make you more likely to have to go back on your prednisone and use your rescue inhaler. You know, so that's another thing in particular that's important. And, you know, for someone who does have asthma, if you haven't had your rescue inhaler refilled, now's a good time to make sure you have that medicine at home so you're ready to protect yourself in that regard. When someone has chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or emphysema and they're exposed for long term, you know, it can make them have an exacerbation as well, making it hard for them to breathe. And for people with underlying heart disease, the same concern for them as well. So this is part of why we want to make sure people are very cognizant of the risks that's going on right now. Uh, next, we have Darla Miles from WABC. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Can you hear me okay? We hear you. Okay, great. Ken, a lot of questions we're getting uh, in the field from New Yorkers. They want to know exactly what's in the air. We know that it's fine particulate matter. But in terms of it being hazardous, could you kind of explain for us what particles are actually in the air that are of concern? Or is it the fact that these particles are a little bit larger than that they can, that they can travel to the lungs, the, um, uh, the, 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 the respiratory tract? So kind of explain exactly what's, what's this fine particular matter in the air and, and, and what it is, because people want to know. Yeah, and Darla, I think that's a wonderful question that people are asking. So when you look at the air quality index in particular, it really measures five things. And the five things it measures is ozone, and then it measures something called particulate matter, and then it measures carbon monoxide, sulfur dioxide, and nitrogen dioxide. These are the things that are measured. You know, when you have a wildfire in particular, 
There's a lot of things that are in the air from a wildfire, but the particulate matter in particular might sound a little bit nebulous to people, but it, what it means is it's something that's smaller than two and a half microns. And, and Darla, I realize most people don't use the word micron in everyday language, but you know, a hair, like I, you know, one of my hairs is probably about 50 microns in diameter. So these are things that are very small. Particulate matter is very small. You can't see it with your naked eye. But particulate matter refers to all the other particles. They're smaller than two and a half microns. And Darla, why that's important is when objects are smaller, smaller than two and a half microns in particular, they can migrate down our respiratory system into our lower respiratory tract much easier because they're smaller. Keep in mind, some of the bigger particles are filtered out by our nose. You know, we have hairs in our nose. We all do. And that's part of what our nose does. So I hope that answers uh, your listeners and viewers' questions. Thank you. All right, next we'll go to Mackie Baker, Buffalo News. Is that me? Yes, go ahead. Okay, sorry, it was weird. Like you muted it for a second. Um, can we talk about tomorrow? Because it, it really looks like from the projections that tomorrow could possibly be even worse. What are things that could happen? Like, could schools close or i mean what 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 are the things that could happen well we're, we're looking at the conditions for tomorrow uh, and assessing the meteorological trends and see where the wind is going to be taking the smoke but we are we have already now put out again a statewide health advisory to limit all outdoor activities uh certainly strenuous activities for every part of the state except for the adirondacks so that would pertain to western new york um of course the uh, conditions on the ground will dictate the actions that folks need to take. The governor today recommended that uh, schools in, in all parts of the state limit outdoor activity. So we would imagine that's going to continue tomorrow, uh, but we'll put out updates as soon as we have them. Thank you. We're going to try Eduardo Cuevas one more time. Hey, Eduardo Cuevas, USA Today Network, New York. Can you hear me now? I am so sorry about that. We hear you. Okay. Um, I just wanted to check, um, uh, Commissioner McDonald, uh, New York City had, had issued some guidance around masking, um, and just want to be clear on your earlier point with, you know, the N95 you were holding. Um, is that recommendation, uh, you know, applying statewide with these advisories, or, or what's the thought process there of uh, um, guidance for, for face masks? Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Eduardo. You know, right now across the state, it's pretty significant we are. You know, if you look at how much the air quality index has accelerated across the entire state, you know, right now it would apply. And I think what you really have to look at is like, what is our AQI number? And how does that fit in for your personal health and, and your personal risk? You know, certainly if it's over 300 and you have to go outside and you're an otherwise healthy person, if it's over 300, I would wear a mask and I'd wear an N95, like I talked about earlier. You know, I talked to Dr. Vassan this morning and it made a lot of sense, but they're recommending New York City when you look at their level right now as well. And I think it really gets to like, if you have to go outside, a mask is a way to protect you. And keep in mind, what a mask does is it really filters the air you breathe. And I, I think it's important to have this in mind is when you filter the air you breathe, what happens is the particles that I was talking to Darla about aren't getting into your respiratory system. They're not getting down to your lungs. And that's how a mask protects you. Uh, what it does is it keeps the air coming into your lungs clean. So you're not getting all clogged up and then prone to infection or inflammation and exacerbating any underlying disease or putting you at risk for pneumonia or bronchitis. So, so thank you, Eduardo. And Alex from the Wall Street Journal asked whether or not the next couple of days means Friday, tomorrow and Friday. So yes, um, Alex, we're looking at uh, conditions that will continue to bring smoke into New York State Thursday and Friday, and we'll make a reassessment at, uh, probably on Friday about the weekend. Okay, we're gonna to go to Tom Puckett next. My next question, gentlemen, was how soon will all of this dissipate and we're back to normal air quality? Well, it's a good question. It's certainly on our minds. Um, we want the fires to certainly stop. I mean, that's number one, address this at the source and that's why we're helping Canada right now fight fires. Uh, but ultimately, uh, this is gonna continue for the next few days and, and, and likely through the weekend. Uh, we'll we'll uh, we'll pray for rain up north um, and and pray for the winds to shift. But at this point, right now, it looks like several more days of this in New York State. 
I'm gonna go to Maya Kaufman next. Hi, this is Maya from Politico. Can you hear me? Yes. Great. So the New York City Health Commissioner had said earlier today that they're not seeing an uptick in emergency room visits in the city, although he noted that could change. So what are we seeing statewide in terms of emergency room visits and also 911 calls for related emergencies? Are there upticks anywhere? If so, where? How much? And then if we aren't seeing an increase, does that surprise you at all, given the research that shows health outcomes like that from wildfire smoke? You know, keep in mind, we, we have, we are looking at that. You know, we have something called syndromic surveillance, which is just, you know, it's, it's a way of measuring who's going into emergency departments. And we also, we get that syndromic surveillance for when emergency medical services are dispatched. So we are looking at that. You know, keep in mind, you need more than a few days to say you see a trend uh, because you normally see waxing and waning with these type of things. So I haven't seen a trend yet, but we're looking at it. We're keeping track of that. But, you, but also keep in mind this is that because, you know, you're inhaling this, you know, the air that's more polluted, it may take a little bit for that to cause a problem with somebody. So in other words, you know, someone may be out in the air today and be doing okay with it, you know, and they, but it's tomorrow when they might wake up with their cough and it might, when they work up like, just, I'm not feeling so good. And that might part because it took a little bit of time for that to settle into their lungs, cause an inflammatory reaction and then cause problems here. So we're keeping an eye on it. You know, keep in mind, state health commissioner, I'm interested in preventing problems. Really don't want folks to get sick right now. So my friends in central New York in particular right now, when I look at your air quality index numbers, really would prefer folks stay inside right now. All right, we have time for one more question and let me unmute Alex Jannon. I'm Dr. McDonald. We know N95s are preferable. Um, how helpful, if at all, are KN95s? I know a lot of people have some of those left from the COVID pandemic, fewer have N95s. Will they do any good at all? Yeah, they will. You know, and I think I would use the best available mask you have access to. You know, if if all you have is a K95, they're fine, you know? And if you have a, you know, a, a, a surgical mask, that works too, you know? And I think the point I'm trying to get here is like, you gotta use what's the best mask you have available uh, to you, you know, for the situation you're in right now. You know, if you have a surgical mask, for example, it's gonna give you some protection. Of course, the N95 and the K95 are much better masks uh, to use during times like this. So, so thank you. All right, both commissioners have to head out. So thank you everyone for joining. Hope we got to as many questions as possible and I will send everyone a link to this recording as soon as I can. Thanks everyone. Thanks everybody. This has been breaking news. 